cold polar air makes its way into Texas this afternoon with clear skies and temperatures back down into the 50s and 60s. Let's take a look at the surface map. That system that produced tornadoes and severe weather in Mississippi and Alabama has shifted eastward, bringing the severe threat into the Carolinas and eastern Georgia. And out in that region, we can see the maritime tropical air mass right there on the east coast and dew points all the way up near 70 around Savannah. Further to the west, we have the cold front making its way across Georgia and along the Gulf Coast north winds, bringing that cool air southward. And then a look out in the western U.S., we have a new Pacific system coming inland. Weather is starting to go downhill in northern California. And further up to the north, you can see the west winds coming into Portland and Seattle. And looks like a triple point right there around the Seattle-Tacoma area. In the north central U.S., we have high pressure, 1031 millibar high there, driving cold air southward. And then on the west side of that high, we have very mild air making its way up into the Canadian prairies. Starting to see the appearance of 50s and even 60s. That's going to be, I guess, around Cardston, Alberta. And then a quick check up there in the Arctic. Not much going on. Still quite cold with minus 10 to minus 20. But check out Yukon. We're seeing 27, 28, and even 36 there. And around south of Yellowknife, 40s. So things are starting to warm up. The pressure and thickness chart shows that the bulk of the cold air is up there in Quebec, filtering down into the Great Lakes and around the backside of that system on the east coast. Frontal boundary clearly indicated by the thickness gradient there. And the other portion of that associated with a warm front up there in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And then in the western U.S., active cold front, moving into northern California and Oregon. The northern part of that is an occlusion extending up into British Columbia. And somewhere in Washington, we have a warm front. Then touching base with our heights and vorticity chart, Cut off low in Kentucky and Tennessee. The main branch of the polar front jet up there in Canada, out towards Quebec and Maine, and then the southern branch down along the Gulf Coast. Ridging, building into the Rockies right there, and troughing and height falls moving on to the west coast. Here's the SPC storm reports for yesterday. What we see here is a cluster of numerous high wind reports in Mississippi and tornado reports in central and western Alabama. The SPC high risk for yesterday looked like this. It captured that wind report area pretty well. The tornado cluster was kind of on the eastern edge. And we thought that that eastern area would come together in the evening, but that actually produced storms quite early in the convective day. Most of those tornado reports were around 3, 4, 5 p.m. So this is how things looked yesterday, about 2 p.m. Central. This was the cluster of cells out ahead of the line. The main line was a lot further out to the west, and the front itself was still around the Monroe, Louisiana area. There were a few noteworthy storms in here. The northern one, this is south of Tuscaloosa, and you can see the town of Moundville right there. And if we run this for about an hour, you can see that cell come together. It develops a hook echo and then moves across Moundville into the area south of Tuscaloosa. And that definitely did produce damage. I believe that was an EF0 to EF1. I can't recall offhand, but we can check out the velocity, back that up just a little bit, and you can see that very tight couplet moving just north of Moundville, and it looks like it intensifies as it moves towards the northeast. 
So this is at 2.27 p.m. And as it moves northeast towards southern Tuscaloosa, you can see some very intense velocities coming together here. We've got 50 outbound and about 34 inbound. And that's going to give us just under 100 knots of gate-to-gate -gate shear. Then we have this southern cluster. We're going to cover that in a little bit, but you're going to notice that moves into the region between Montgomery and Birmingham, and that'll become significant very shortly. And then the other storms of interest are way down south near Hattiesburg, Mississippi. If we run that forward, got a couple cells down here well to the south, but we're going to focus on this one way down here. There's a very spectacular drone sequence involving this storm down to the southwest as it reaches this area here. So you can see the storm organizing and becoming tornadic as it crosses into Alabama. And it's about that point where it has a tornado on the ground. It's very difficult to pick that out because we're so far from the radar. This is about 70 or 80 miles out, but we can certainly see a circulation up there about 10,000 feet up into the cloud. That drone footage was by Brian Emfinger, and I believe it was in this area right here, northeast of Silas, from what I was able to tell in the video. There's a house right there and a cell phone tower that is featured in the video. And if you go through the video, there's also a water tower, and I believe that's that right there. Aside from that, I was not really able to tell much from the video. The only thing I'm certain of is that it is in the Silas, Alabama area. That Silas storm would continue to move to the northeast towards Campbell Landing. And there it produced its only casualty of the day, two injuries and damage to four homes. One home was destroyed, two people were injured. And returning to the eastern cluster, two strong supercells moving across Dallas County, producing damage. And that's thought to be one of the strongest tornadoes of the day, EF2. And let's run that forward. You can see that moving over pools, crossroads, and then out towards the interstate. Here we zoomed in, and I put a dot there over pools, crossroads, and you can watch the storm relative velocity as that circulation heads right into that area. Very tight couplet there. Got about 28 out and 61 in. So that's given us about 80 knots of shear. And then carrying that forward, looks like the circulation kind of breaks up. And we'll just run the reflectivity. You can see pools, crossroads, and there goes the hook echo right over that region, and you can see what looks like a debris cloud right there. So I hope that gives you a little bit better insight what happened yesterday. It was very fast moving, and as we saw yesterday, the models did not handle the positioning on those clusters very well. And that did throw us for a loop. I had to put out a quick revision. But that's just the nature of these fast-moving systems. It's kind of hard to predict things until the storms are right up on you. Let's take a look at the forecast for the weekend going into next week. Our East Coast system will be moving out to sea overnight, leaving an occlusion in its wake some precip there in western Virginia, and then elsewhere the cold air filtering southward. The cold front in the western U.S. is moving onshore, so that's going to bring somewhat deteriorating conditions into California overnight. Not much to talk about for tomorrow's webcast, so it should be kind of a quiet one. We'll be seeing return flow starting to set up in the plains, and cold air in the southeastern U.S. and the East Coast region. Out in the western U.S., that cold front will be making its advance with some 
snow showers in the central Sierra Nevadas. And then going into Saturday, that front will continue advancing into Utah and Wyoming and bring some snow showers and mixed precipitation to the Salt Lake City metro. That system will come out into the plains around Sunday. So the fronts by that time will be looking somewhat like that. And we get our first rain chances around late Sunday into Monday. Storms forming initially along the leading edge of that warm air return and then organizing a bit on Monday as we get the stronger dynamics and increased southerly flow and moisture. So it could very well be a storm day in parts of Oklahoma and central Texas on Monday. And then things move rapidly eastward Monday night into Tuesday. So Tuesday we may be looking at a bit of a repeat of what happened yesterday, maybe not quite as severe, hopefully. But certainly a lot of thunderstorms in Mississippi, Alabama, and the New Orleans area. For Wednesday, things move eastward and looks like a dammed air mass right there. Cold air holding tight against the Appalachians. Cold air surging into the Midwest right there. And then things getting active once again in the Pacific Northwest, another frontal system moving inland. So by late in the week, that'll be crossing the Rockies. And you can see things coming together there for the weekend of the 27th, 28th. And we could have more chances for storms once again around the 27th. And that's all I've got for this edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you enjoyed it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this together and get it uploaded. Hope you have a great Thursday night, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.